for this game going? Yeah, really good. Um, it's certainly all football, the school being over. And uh, so the guy's been real focused and working really hard. Yeah, you certainly need extra time to get ready for travel plans and all that stuff. But is, is 29 days between games almost too much to deal with? Well, like, like I said way back when, it, it can be hard because you lose a rhythm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Praxton is not playing the game. And so that, that kind of is just something we all have to deal with. Um, but, you know, we're smart in how we, the work we're getting, mm -hmm. I think. And so I think it's a, it's a fine line of we're working hard. I think guys are improving. I think young guys are getting, some of our young guys have gotten good work. And uh, we'll practice one more time before we give them some yeah. more time to rest up. You mentioned the young guys. How much of this period is about getting ready for Alabama, but also getting young guys prepped for, for next yeah. season? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's all about uh, the next game. But um, we have, have had a lot of time, so those guys have gotten some great extra work as well. You, uh, you've had a lot of experience preparing a team logistically and everything for bowl games. Yeah. You have to prepare a little different, you and your staff and kids, for probably more media attention, media time for this one than a typical bowl game? I, I mean, um, I don't know what you do to prepare for that other than tell them this is what we got going. I mean, I don't think it's overwhelming. Um, you know, we, what's hard, we have a lot of time being down there, which that's a lot of time. By the end, it's, I know we all feel like, can we please just play this game and <laughs> go home? Um, but it'll be great for those guys to experience this um, this whole week, so we're excited about that. And then I already know by the end of it, it'll be like, it's time to play. <laughs> hey, what the goal was... by, by tomorrow, last practice, pretty much have the whole game plan in and yeah. all that stuff. Is yeah, that... yeah, for sure. We have that in. And then when we go down there, I mean, it's really, you know, get your mind right, get your legs right, polish up, but there won't be a whole lot of new stuff going in. Any uh, Christmas plans? And obviously, players, coaches, you're getting everyone kind of a couple days off. Yeah. So step back yeah I mean that's what it is it's kind of rest up recharge um, spend some good quality time with the family for a few days and then uh, you know on Christmas Day we'll travel back down there can what you was, completely escape from what's in front of you I mean is that you kind of have to force yourself to maybe enjoy it no I mean a bit, or is that if you watch the tape that I'm watching there's no way you're escaping this I mean it's uh, <laughs> you know it's on everybody's mind but that doesn't mean that um, we won't have a good, you know, few days with our family and appreciate and enjoy Christmas for sure. You did get one day to raise the 12 flag. What was that like? Yeah. That's awesome. It was great. I really appreciate the, the Seahawks for allowing me to do that. Um, it, you know, it's a, it's a great stadium. You know, it's so loud and uh, the 12s are passionate. And, um, you know, I think this football, this area is so football passionate. I love going anywhere where they're passionate about football. I mean, I think that's what's really cool about us going back to this bowl game. There's going to be a lot of passionate football people back there, and that's what this thing's all about. You're going to wear that jersey a bunch, right, that they gave you? <laughs> <laughs> I will when I'm at home and, and I'm watching them and rooting them on. Yeah, you need someone to be able to see you in the dark or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I kind, of, I kind of liked them. I kind of liked when, they, when, when they called to ask you to do that, was yeah. that just an automatic yes, or did you have to think about it for no, a little bit? No, it wasn't. It was probably an automatic no. And yeah. then uh, Coach Carroll's like, you know, you, you recruit guys that will see this. Yeah. And I said, yeah, you're kind of right. And so he, 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 he knows. He thinks like a coach. And, you know, and then, you know, once I thought about it, it's awesome, awesome yeah. honor. It was well, great. Do you feel like you're almost in some ways because of the proximity to Tuscaloosa that you're preparing for a road game? Oh, yeah. It's, there's no question. It's a road game. I think – um, you know, the game that we played last year, you know, halfway across the country, mm -hmm. it's a road game. Certainly this one is. I mean, when we go into um, that stadium, you know, it's going to be three quarters mm -hmm. uh, Alabama and quarter Washington. So it's a road game. What's the, what's the biggest challenge that you see on film in regards to getting your passing game going against that defense? Uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, the biggest challenge is the 11 guys lined up over mm -hmm. there. I mean, that's. That's the biggest challenge. He's got really good players. Um, but it's really, it's really good because it's going to challenge us to play at our best. And that's how it should be at the end of the season. These kids have played well you know, all season long. And, um, and so they deserve this game. And, and they're going to have to play at the highest level, which I think that's what everybody wants to do anyways. So it's, uh, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. You feel like Alabama is a heavy favorite, I guess, at least in that, in that world, the Vegas yeah. world has kind of motivated these guys and kind of you got a us against the world type of mentality going on? I mean, I, I think these guys have had that mentality anyways. I mean, you got to play the game with an edge and it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter if they're saying we're favored, they're favored. It doesn't matter. It just matters that we're prepared and we go out and we execute the best we can do. I mean, that, that's really what it matters. I mean, if you need motivation for this game, you, you, you don't, don't get on this plane. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, really? I mean, there, there's enough of that out there. Is it right that you uh, bump into Jim Levitt the day after the yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw him. Yeah. He, what did he say exactly about the trick play stuff? Or? Oh yeah, we were just talking about preparing and those type of things. And yeah, you know, I mean, I think everybody works on trick plays against this. Yeah, right. so. Is that that's the sort of thing though? There was rumor report that Alabama was going through like eight or ten years and charting your yeah. trick plays. I mean, what's your reaction when when you hear that? Yeah, they got the manpower to do it, so <laughs> go go do it. You know, I mean, uh, we'll prepare the best we can, and whatever we think is the best chance to win, we'll. We'll go. What do you think of, I mean, it seems like every time a big game like this comes up, I'll yeah. say everyone harkens back to the Fiesta Bowl and yeah. the three, play, three yeah. trick plays that worked there, and you got, you've got kind of this, this label that's <laughs> kind of stuck with you over the years. Yeah. What do you make of that? Uh, yeah, uh, great. Go, go prepare <laughs> for trick plays and, you know, do what you got to do. Is, is, it, that, is that kind of what you, like you said, what, kind of what you like? You, it's sort of a, it's like, I don't know, double-edged sword. Like, I think there's a lot of tape. After, I mean, there's a lot of tape to just look at this year. And if somebody wants to go back in all those years, and you know, it's just a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of research you got to do. And um, so, you know, it's, it's, you, you can take, you know, a couple different approaches. You don't want anybody to see your stuff, or it's like, go look at it all. And, you know, in this day and age, everybody's going to look at it all. Chris, can you talk a bit about Jalen Hurts and just kind of what this guy brings to the table yeah. and how he's maybe unique or the same from other mobile quarterbacks you've seen? Well, you know, I think he's done an unbelievable job. As I hate to even say, like, as a freshman coming mm -hmm. in because he doesn't really play like a freshman, but I still marvel at that because I think one of his, from what I can tell, what I've seen is just how calm he is. I think that's always a, a really uh, – positive, important characteristic out of a quarterback that they just they just play the game. You know, they don't get too high, they don't get too low. And I think that's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly a lot harder as a freshman. And, you know, that's the first thing that jumps out. And then he's this tremendous athlete that yeah. they do a great job of designing the system around your quarterback to make him successful. How much do you kind of bank on your past experiences? Adam mentioned the Fiesta Bowl and just games down there, SEC teams, things like that. How much do you kind of go back and think about what you did in years prior to get ready for this game? You know, every game is different, you know, but you always use everything you've been through of like, hey, we've been, you know, this was important, um, you know, either a positive or a negative, and that's what you're trying to do. It's mm -hmm. just you, you can't talk about everything. you got to figure out the really important things, let the kids latch onto that, and away we go. Coach, Coach Smith had talked about Jake benefiting from not having to throw as much these last few weeks and getting yeah. a little time to rest. I'm yeah. sure everyone did. But yeah. Did you sense that, that – did you see some fatigue around <clears throat> maybe later in, in the year? Oh, I think everybody's tired. I mean, it's just a lot of reps. Um, you know, you don't think about your, your quarterback as much because everybody's like wear and tear on your body. I can't – I do know how many balls he's thrown, you know, I mean – Every day it's charted, and so that's that's a lot of footballs that are thrown, and we're always trying to figure out whether it's GPS systems with our players that run, whether it's and uh, you know explosive movements out of our quarterbacks as well. It's just a lot of you know week in and week out. It's just a lot, and so it's good to be able to let you know not only him but all of our guys rest. How does that? How does like quarterback fatigue show up in a game? Or if well, I think it's film? I think it's you know I mean guys get hit and they get beat up. Um, you know, let alone all the reps on your arm and all those type of things. And so it's always, I mean, Coach Aha and I, we're talking about that every day. It's like we're still trying to figure out, like, how, how to maximize, you know, their freshness. We're still practicing hard, getting the reps you need. And it's not an easy uh, case to crack. You know, I think, it's, I think it's more art than science right now, even though we're trying to bring as much science into it. So what are you trying to crack a case with their deep rush defense? Yeah. What, when you've broken it down, what would have been kind of the, the staples of, of their defense to allow them to be so effective? I mean, it always starts in that, you know, the front. Um, you know, those, those D linemen are stout. I mean, that's, that's what it is. It starts right there. And, 
And then, uh, you know, they, they just go, it just comes back to be having really, really good talent. I mean, it starts in that D line, and then you put one of the best, if not best linebacker in the country right behind them, and, you know, pretty good secondary. Uh, and so that's what it is. I mean, they, they're playing elite defense. They've done it for, you know, a bunch of years, but they're in a great rhythm and all those things. And so it's nothing that we haven't seen, you know, scheme wise. Um, but, you know, they just got a lot of playmakers over there. It seems like, it, but I mean, they're only averaging or allowing two yards a rush. I mean, they're, the difference between them and like the second best rush defense mm -hmm. in the country is pretty extreme. Mm -hmm. So is it just elite athletes? Because it seems like they're a lot of, there's a lot of elite athletes out there. Yeah, and uh, it's never going to be any one thing when you're playing. Like I said, I mean, I, I don't want to minimize their, I mean, they're really good coaches as well. But, um, you know, to have that, you know, that much talent, um, I, I haven't seen anyone have that, that, that much talent there, you know, across the board. And, um, you know, there's usually a guy or two in the front. And they just got really, really stout guys there in the front. And they play like that every game. Chris, what's, what's pregame for a game like this like for you guys? Do you bring in some ex-players to get the guys all fired up and smashing lockers in the, in the locker room? What's that moment like for you? I mean, I think it's the exact opposite. Yeah. You know, that's why we're not bringing you in for sure, Softy. <laughs> I mean, if you need that for this type of game, I mean, you don't need that. What we need yeah. to do is be able to calm down and have a chance to really focus in and play, play our best. Yeah. I mean... That's the way we approach it, at least. So I've got, I've got no shot. Addressing <laughs> the team pregame, that's not going to happen. We'll, we'll let you well, know if we need to bring you in. How, how important is it, though, for you for this month to get the X guys involved and just yeah. make them feel like they're a part of this? You know, I, I, not, not just this month. I mean, I want them yeah. to always feel yeah. a part of this, um, you know, year round. I think it's we're playing right now, so they pay attention. And, you know, anytime we can get those guys over to be around us, to watch us practice, to say a few things, I think that's always good. But I, I don't think it's just like right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it needs to be always. And obviously you can't talk specifics, but what have you noticed that this last few weeks has meant for recruiting and just the, uh, the image around the program? Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think it's, I think it's real good. It's real positive. Um, you know, and, and then the trick is to, you know, to keep playing mm -hmm. at, at this level. And, and that's how things slowly but surely change. It can't be any one game, one